Alrighty. Let me make sure that we are yet again live everywhere. Hey, hey, everybody. Isn't it fun when stuff doesn't work? All right. So let's see. Make sure we're back live. And we'll try this again. Okay, we're live on Facebook. Hi, Facebook. And we are, I think we're live on YouTube. I'm going to go ahead. If nothing else, again, this will be a video. Hope your Halloween's fantabulous. And I'm just going to repeat what I said very quickly um, to explain what the heck I'm doing. Basically, a lot of people asked me in a previous video how to do, how to make, and what the point was to the airlift. And I personally use airlifts in a tank um, that's like, uh, say, first of all, everyone uses them in fry systems. Uh, the reasoning is that the it keeps movement going throughout the system, but it also isn't so rough and tough that it's hurting the fry. And Dan can give a little better explanation. Go ahead, Dan. Why? Oops, sorry, caught me off guard. What was the question again? <laughs> the question was, why are the airlifts used in fry systems? Well, the reason that I use it is because, number one, it's a cheap way of moving water. Okay. Number two... I can move the water without having to have a pump flowing in and, and literally wash out my artemia. So I can turn the float way, way down for the water coming in from the sump and returning to the sump. But at the same time, I can move the water. Um, you gotta understand too that I'm using a 90 gallon tank. So I have water trickling in, but I have constant movement because the airlift pushes the water around. Right. And um, I use it in my fry tub systems. But I also have been known to use the airlift in a quarantine tank. Uh, if you've got seahorses, new seahorses that are like already nervous and shy and whatnot, and you just don't, I don't know, I, I don't like, I like to let them kind of get used to things easily. Or maybe you have a system that's not, you know, maybe your quarantine is extremely simple, meaning there's, you know, you don't have equipment for both your tank and your quarantine your quarantine is just a basic you know like not very nifty kind of thing it works it works to move the food around it works to uh, give you surface agitation and we'll discuss why keeping it at the top is uh, important in a moment but anyhow so again the way that these are made are you have PVC I did find my three four three quarter inch pipe yay me um, so I don't have to cut another one because it's a pain cutting these things. However, you use PVC, you use a T at the bottom. Usually, like I, I showed in the, in the one inch that I'll show you again in a minute, that um, usually I would then drill a hole right above the T um, and push the air line through the hole right to about to where you can see where it's like kind of in the middle. However, I can't find my drill. So Dan very coolly told me that you can also just kind of like shove it in there. So we're gonna try and see what the difference is in the shoving method and also in the difference between a one inch and a, and a uh, three or a three fourths inch. Dan, what did you say you thought you know is the difference? What is the difference exactly? Between the size? Yes, more flow. Right. Well, not more flow, but what happens is the smaller the diameter of the pipe, the more force the stream is going to be coming out of the, the uh, pipe with the water. Gotcha. Yeah. And my pipe's too, too tall. So, oh my gosh. Oh, see, I should just do things live more often. I have never cut a pipe that easily. It never works for me. And it just did. I'm so excited. Okay. So in building, I have stuck my T into my 3 4 inch. And what is this called again? Is it called actually, what is it called? Which piece? I'm sorry, the gray piece on top, the 90 degree. That's a, it's a 90 degree sweep. It's a sweep. electrical PVC, it's conduit. Okay, I said something like duct because that's what it said on the tag. <laughs> All right, sweep. But if you go down the plumbing or no, it's the electrical aisle, you'll find these. It's just, I don't even know what this is. It says, uh, Carwan. Okay. Anyways, sweep. All right. 
So now we literally have our three quarter inch made. I personally use uh, zip ties to tie the airline just to keep it where I want it to go. But this is how easy this thing is to make. All right, Dan, I have a question for you, first of all, uh, because I haven't made one in so long because I've had my made. Does it matter which way the T goes or, you know, which nope. way it's facing? None of that matters. No, it doesn't matter. You don't have to use a T. A T just makes it kind of nice as a stand and has two different areas to pull the water in. Yeah. I've actually used a five way before as well. Really? Um, okay. Yep. Um, there's any number of ways you can do it. I've, I've used all kinds of different contraptions on the bottom. It, gotcha. It's just whatever works. Gotcha. I'm so sorry. I'm like seizure it looked like oh i'm not sure was i seizing guys i'm sorry i can't read the comments very well what oh i know yeah i need to be careful of my plugs i'm not being very responsible i apologize okay so anyways now if i start seizing i apologize but i'm going to try to lift the camera and show you guys a little bit better what i'm doing in fact miss can you tell tanya come here so i don't just scream can you please tell tanya come here Thank you. All right. If she comes, then I'll have her hold the camera. If not, then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do with what we got. Okay. So, am I seizing yet? Hope not. Okay, guys. So, there we go. We're looking at the bucket. Here is the tea. Yeah. Um, I was hoping you could hold up the camera for me. All right. So what I want you to do, Tony, is you got to look there to see what you're doing. And you want to point and actually just not show the <laughs> cords and show the bucket, just like that. All right, so we've got our T for the stand, the PVC, the, uh, I already forgot what it's called, sweep. Cole, go back a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. Like so. There we go. All right. And then what I really wanted to show is I just wanted to kind of do a test real quick. I know this is kind of not working very well, but wanted to do a test real quick and see if the difference between the one inch and the three quarter inch um, flow rate. And my pump is old, and so you can really truly adjust your flow rates based on what you're trying to do, whether it's a fry system or whether it is a you know a quarantine or whatever. Um, but it definitely does move the food. Ooh, and we should throw something in and show how it moves around. Yes, we should. All right, but anyways, so you just literally put it, can you tape like going down like that? There we go. So you literally put it at the bottom. Now, Dan, explain to us, oops, sorry. Sorry, everybody. Explain to us why it's important that it be half in, half out. Can you guys see? Here, let me see it for a second, honey. All right, sorry. Can you guys see? Lord help me, I'm no good at this either. The water coming out, see how it's just a small, slow, but it's flowing. And the reason that this would be really cool for a fry system is because then if little fries went through that tea down there, well, they'd just come right back out the top. So and you they'd want be me to fine. go get some food or something? Yeah, go get me some, yeah, something. What? Just go get me, yeah, go get me a piece of mices. Get me mices. What is that? Where are they? Fish food. Where are they? Torino's. All right. So there's that. They're in the freezer, right? Now we're going to do the little example and see what happens when we put the food in. But really quickly, I want to do a comparison of. You want to be my camera holder again, yep. please? Next time, guys, I'll have a second camera set up and we'll be ready to go. So sorry. Ew, you can sit right there. Ew, ew, tape right there. Ew, ew, <laughs> Thank you, Tori. Ew, All right. <laughs> I apparently have the mysis, yeah. still frozen. Yeah. They're so wonderful, yeah. my family. All right, so that we're gonna just dump that in our bucket and let it thaw while we test out the two thirds. So there we go, some food. All right, and it's gonna float a minute because, um, well, yeah, all right. Okay, so for our two third inch, make sure you watch what you're doing because you're taping now my legs. No, I know. tape this, uh, tape this, stay there. Okay, thank you very much appreciate you okay so where's my other pencil well here's my question so apparently we're supposedly able to just put this into 
and up into the pipe is what Dan told me before I called. So let's see how that works out for us. And it did not because of the fact that it fell out. So I'm going to again suggest using PVC. I mean using zip ties, but we're going to try to make this work for the example. And then we're going to see if we can see the, uh, the food float around. All right, so I'm putting this. Dan, tell me if I'm doing this wrong. Oh, you can't see. That's right. All right, so I'm putting it up into the PVC, correct? About halfway up is what my, my goal is. And then I'm going to try to keep it in there and see how that works out for me. And it's not working. Okay. All right, so this is why we want drilled holes. <laughs> Maybe I have to go up further. Just keep Good work without having to drill a hole. How did you? How do you do it without the hole, uh, well, sir? I stick them just at the bottom of the the up uh, the uplift tube. I don't put a T on. I just put the okay. Uh, Let's try what you said. Bottom of the tube, and uh, they always work. Okay, so take the T off. Kelly. Yeah. Just think about uh, an under gravel filter. If you ever was into fresh water, small tanks, and uh, you had under gravel filtration. They have uplift tubes that are air powered. I have honestly, and seriously. With those, you shove the damn tube right down through the top, down to the bottom. Oh. And uh, as the air bubbles come up, uh, it comes up alongside the airline tube and inside the uh, the main uplift. And uh, when it gets to the top, uh, it's directed it out uh, at right angles to the tube. So you're saying. So it's putting... not a gradual curve like this. But it still works. So you're saying, Kelly? Yes, sir. Can you see my picture? I can, and you should have done these demonstrations. <laughs> but I saw okay. it for a second now, here. Let me wait. Let me come up here and make your picture the big one. Sorry, hang on. Everybody, we need to make a vote and tell Dan that he needs to be the one to do these videos. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, uh, go ahead, Dan. Speak. All right, there, this is a tank that's going to get sterilized tomorrow, but uh, as you can see, it's quite dirty. Um, but that's an airlift in action, and I can control, i got to reach around here, I can control the amount of flow. I can turn it way down, or if I want it cranking. Now there is say, your demonstration. There you go. Okay. <laughs> now, if you look up top, I've got a clip up there that holds the airline where I want it. Uh-huh. And... It actually is not touching the side of the tank. Whoops, let me turn this down the other way. It's not actually touching the side of the tank. It's, I can go by there if uh, they're riding me in. But, you're breaking up just a tad, Dan. What's that? Uh, your video was great, but your audio broke up. You said you can go beside it, what? Beside it, it's not actually touching the side of the tank. Okay. That way, if I've got fry that are right in the edge of the tank, they don't get stuck. Gotcha. Gotcha. But that's basically it. You know, in this case, I'm using a T. Um, I have to look around and see if I can find one that has the uh, five-way. Um, Here's one that has a five-way. See down the bottom? Um, hang on, Tanya, you keep holding it. I'm looking, Dan. Okay, go on. I was trying to see if I could show the food. Go on. A five-way. I love the, the five-way because that's grabbing more air. Right. It, well, not more air. I'm it's sorry. just more stable and easier to hold it in place. And this one here is, is not set up and running properly because, number one, it should be a little bit higher. Okay. It's actually submerged. And number two, the airflow is turned way down on it. Okay, and I th honestly, I think in my demonstration again, folks, sorry it's Halloween, but um, the bottom line is I'm thinking that that's my problem. I think that my pump is, uh, is out of juice, bottom line. I think my pump, I'm trying to make two airlifts work, and they're just not having it. Um, but question now, 
And uh, Eric Grafton asked, is this for baby ponies or would you, where would you put it in the main display or what? Um, or in the sump and uh, Dan does use it for fry and he can answer in a moment. I just wanted to mention too that the reason that I was even trying to show this build and how to make it and what it does is because I mentioned it in a feeding video because if you have brand new seahorses who are not eating and you don't happen to have a spare pump or you don't want to for some reason put a pump in your tank, um, this can keep the flow moving. Now, in this case, it is a little bit, it's too hard to see. I didn't do a very good job demonstrating, sorry dudes. But bottom line is, um, if I had more power on my pump, then this would be shooting food out through the top. And actually, I'm gonna keep talking to y'all, but I'm gonna shut off my camera and just chit chat with you guys so I can see if I can get this two thirds working. But anyways, um, Dan, in, go ahead. In, re, in regards to the question of when you would use it, yes. using it for a fry tank makes sense, but you can also use it in a regular tank to, to augment the flow inside the tank. And during hurricanes, we try to set these up in all the tanks so that if nothing else, we have air running first and we have circulation in the tank before we can bring the uh, pumps back up online. Right. And um, that makes perfect sense. And well, can you explain the reason why it's important to be half in and half out of the water, meaning the top of the system? And I'll show that in a moment, but go ahead. Well, there's two reasons why I do it. The first reason is I like the bubbles bursting inside the pipe so I have less salt creep. The second reason is I can actually see the flow coming out and gauge how strong the flow is, where when it's submerged, you really can't, you, you, you can't see so much unless you have something in the water to go by. Gotcha. Makes sense. And um, let's see. Lucy, how you doing? I'm, I'm stalling because I want to go grab this other pump and see if I can show the food moving. So <laughs> I don't know. Anybody get any? Ray, you want to talk about anything real quick? Uh, nothing I could think of. <laughs> okay. Nobody ever accused me of being a quick thinker. No, no, you're fine. Um Let's see. Okay, well, then I, I'm just not going to go grab it, I guess, because I don't want to keep putting you guys on hold. But, um, Dan, how, how high? I was really hoping to show the two-thirds. And, guys, I will do a video with a better pump. That's what What's I'll do. What's the two-thirds? I'm sorry, three-fourths. I'm sorry. Um, the the uh, Comparison between a three-quarter and a one-inch? Yeah, about how much more flow would you say? And I will do a video to back this up, but... Um, I, I don't know. Um, I know that it is faster. You have to turn the air down slower. And my other concern is, is that, you know, with newborn fry, it's not a big deal. But as the fry get older, I, I want a larger diameter so the fry can pass through without it getting, without them getting stuck in there. Oh, there we go. You know what, Dan? Um, I am going to grab the pump because very quickly, can you... Um, explain what types of materials you might use to cover the ends when the fry do get bigger. And I, and guys, I'll be right, right back. It's going to take me 10 sec seconds while he talks to go grab this. So explain the covering of the sides if someone wanted to, please. And thank you. Go ahead. Well, there's a number of ways to do it. And if one way is to cover it with some type of screen material. I have different size screen ranging all the way from 50 microns up to about two inches in diameter. Um, but you could put the appropriate size screen and hot glue it in place or PVC glue it in place over the opening at, at, down on the bottom. Or if you have some type of a uh, screen like they use, they put in bulkheads, you could put one of those in place. It's not a problem with fry. The problem comes in when you get into larger seahorses. And with the one inch pipe, I've actually had seahorses try to work themselves into it and get stuck. And it's kind of a pain in the butt to pull them out. So with the larger seahorses, I'll cover the, the bottom so they can't get inside of it. All right. Did you finish telling? Yep, I just finished as you said, all right. Oh, how cool. Okay, I did grab two more pumps. I'm gonna turn my camera on in a second, guys, and if it doesn't work again, like I said, I will do a video. Um, I did have one question while I'm hooking this all up. Um, Ray had mentioned something about he was doing a comparison with the 
um, under gravel filters, and he was saying something about going down instead of up. But I was supposed well, to it, be. Well, the, the under gravel filters are designed to where you plug the airline in at the top, and it has a rigid tube going down through the bottom, and that works. In this case, I want to try to keep the inside of the tubing clear so that if the fry passed through gotcha. uh, in my fry tanks. But, you know, conceptually, that could work just as well. Um, as far as using the sponge, the sponge can work, but the problem with the sponge is, is that typically in a seahorse tank, they're going to clog up and it's going to slow down the airflow quite a bit. So I try to use material that does not impede the airflow and it runs at a constant rate. Gotcha. And the sponge is also good breeding ground for bad bacteria. Well, that's true. That ain't no joke. All right, let's see if this is enough. Hang on. I'm just trying this one more time, guys. But you could you could put a sponge on there and use it like a sponge filter and do the same thing. I mean, I, I one time I actually did that, um, where I connected it to a sponge filter and did the same thing. And Ray, what you were talking about with the under gravel filters, those this basically works on the same concept. The difference is with the sweep, you get a better flow than you do out of yeah. the ninety degree turn. That's all. I, I was just mentioning it, the under gravel because. Some people that are uh, not on here, but they're watching, and uh, somebody had uh, typed, I saw, I think it was on the YouTube page, somebody had typed something about the under gravel. Gotcha. Yeah, it's it's basically the same concept. Yeah. Well, but I, I, I myself, uh, once uh, I'm through with the, the uh, fry uh, tanks and up, then I just use power heads. Right. Well, right, but in this case, but in, in my case, and you'll see this a lot commercially, I have so much air running that I already have the air running, so there's no additional equipment, um, electrical equipment, no additional electricity, and um, it's just very easy to do. The, the other thing I like about these on fry tanks is, is that if you have just a rigid airline in the tank, the bubbles come up. And as they pull the water up, the water has a tendency to do a 360 degree uh, flow away from the bubbles and it pushes the fry to the sides of the tank and they can get caught in the meniscus. With using this type of a method, if they do get caught in the meniscus, it just keeps spinning them around the tank to where they eventually can get knocked out of it. And Salty Reef, yes, it's basically the same concept as a sponge filter, except we have directional flow where we can push the water and create a direction with it where the typical sponge filter just goes up to the top. Yeah, that's something else that Cheryl had mentioned uh, in the video that I'm still working on finishing with her is that um, when she, she uses it for that, for making the flow kind of spin in a circle, which causes all of the artemia not to get stuck on the, you know, on the middle, in the middle. I can't think of how to say it. I'm sorry trying to work and talk at the same time. It's not going well. Um, I can turn my camera back on, though. I forgot about that. Sorry. Well, Ooh. the only the only problem is, though, with a sponge filter is that, the again, the air is coming, the water is coming straight up to the top and then pushing out towards the sides of the tank. And that, in turn, pushes the fry to the sides of the tank. And small fry can get caught in the meniscus, the, the, the area where the water meets the edge of the tank. Gotcha. I think the reason I prefer the power heads is because I put the power heads on timers so that uh, um, I'm no longer using uh, brine shrimp and the I'm using the uh, frozen mysis. And uh, I have a couple timers on each tank so that uh, when I go to feed, I turn one timer on, which is... Uh, a needle two power head that uh, starts up blowing on the bottom and uh, turns off another one that has a quick filter on it. And I feed the tank and then the timers eventually uh, will turn off the uh, one that's uh, trying to keep the stuff in motion and it'll turn on the other power head that has the quick filter so that it can start removing stuff from the water again. Yeah. And it's just a personal preference, that's all. But at the same time, I have usually at least two open-ended airlines in each tank. 
but they're yeah, going, I, they're not I, I, in any tube or anything. Yeah, I usually don't use open airlines in fry tanks because I don't want to push them off to the sides. And yeah, this is basically the question, this is juveniles at this stage. Yeah, and the question that uh, was popped up a moment ago, I think it was salty salty reef that asked it is can the um wouldn't the sponge filter be beneficial for have beneficial bacteria and it would but most of us already have our uh biological filtration in the sump anyway yeah um, i'd be more so it's really not needed the downside of the sponge who, who wants to talk yeah. about k1 next week and kelly actually be prepared and have stuff ready <laughs> i'm just kidding go on sorry didn't mean to interrupt go on I don't even know what K1 is. What? Something like K9? Dan, what's K1? K1 is just a type of biological media. It's a uh, positively buoyant media that most of us put it in a, some type of a reactor. Uh, I use uh, carboys as my reactors, and um, I drill holes in the side, and it's kind of like a reverse fluidized filter where you know, typical fluidized filter, you've got sand and the water pushes it up and keeps it tumbling. In this case, it stays floating and we bring the water in from the top and push the media down and it constantly tumbles. And the advantage is, is that the tumbling action not sloughs off the old stuff and gives room for new stuff to grow. So it's kind of self-cleaning and it has a tremendous amount of biological area. Um, about four liters in a tank and I can put about a quarter of a pound of food in that tank per day without any problem at all. Yeah. I guess I use the live rock because I've got so damn much of it. Uh, I don't even uh, look for anything else. I don't use live rock because I, I bleach my systems regularly. And well, again, I, do the the, K1, I do that with the rock too. You, well, the K1 media is just very easy to do. Is all. Yeah. Did you say you bleach your systems with rock in it? Sure. Wow. How do you get away with that? Well, same as any time. Sometimes I use the uh, peroxide, but I personally think the bleach does a faster job on it. And uh, once it's bleached, uh, then I do a good flushing, and uh, then I add the Corum X and uh, take out uh, any residue that's left there and, and set it up again. Dump the ammonium chloride in it and uh, cycle it. Huh. Okay really fast because I actually uh, got out my little flashlight and stuff. As you can see, set if this was set up properly, there's the one inch. If you had a better, and you saw Dan's, which was, you know, actually legit, but I was just trying to do my little demo. And as you can see, this would very much cause surface agitation. I don't know if you can see, but the food is not building up on the bottom of the tank. Um, because and of course you know you'd have a tank not a bucket but and I can't give you the comparison we're gonna have to wait and do that on a video because my pump is just not strong enough so make sure you have a strong enough pump oh and Dan what would occur if it did go completely underwater I think you started to say and I interrupted um, it still works it's just that you're gonna have bigger bubbles coming popping up you know I mean push it underwater you'll see Try. It's still going to work. I'm going to try. All right. Well, but it's going to be a little bit louder. You're going to have more salt creep. And you're not going to oh, be able to gauge how much water is flowing. All right. So, oh, yeah, I see. It's uh, My bucket's not wide enough to go down anymore. But, oh, I see. Now, see, okay, and I understand why you wouldn't want that for salt creep reasons. But it does seem to be making, like, a lot more surface agitation. Oh, oh, no, never mind. I, I just answered my own question. It's that circular flow, right? Yeah. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Okay. But it also make more noise if you want, the, you know, when you got all that bubbling going on. It doesn't seem like much, but for me, <laughs> I'm tone deaf between pumps and bubbles and everything else. All right. So we see a little bit, kind of, that it makes a lot of crazy bubbles when it's completely underwater. And if it was completely out of water, would it keep working? It depends on the, how much flow you have. If you have enough flow, yes, it could pump water up and over back into the tank. Or if you don't have enough uh, airflow, then it, no, it would not work. So see, Kelly needs to get new side pumps <laughs> because Kelly's pump 
if you take it out of the water, you'd have no flow and be in trouble. So make sure you got a good pump if you decide to use this. But yep. If you remember when we were talking before, uh, in the aquaponic system, we use air to move, lift the water up from the sump into the the tank. Yeah, I can see. Like on this one, I don't know. Oops, sorry guys. On this one, if you lift it out, it's barely trickling out. But again, that's because my pumps are extremely weak, loud, and old. But you can see, I think, that it's still working. Like it would still continue to work as long as you get enough flow. All right, so kind of botched experiment, but now you know how to make an airlift. You can see, you can see for sure at the bottom that the flow, whoops, sorry. I need to have cameras set up better. That the bottom is not covering with food. It's floating around, and so, you know, it's not something that a lot of people do for fun, but in a pinch, it's an amazing, amazing thing, and it works, and I've used it also, I know we've already discussed this at length, but like in hospital tanks when I'm going to be medicating and don't want to use sponges or don't want to contaminate this, that, or the other, this works absolutely great. In fact, if you guys ever go and watch my ammonia poisoning video, um, you will see one of these in the tank. That's what I used is one of these airlifts and you know It was great because I didn't have to worry about any equipment getting all you know crazed up or any Bacteria going to heck or whatnot and all that. So, okay. Well, I'm going to uh, put my camera back now and chit chat with you guys for a second and uh, be done with this, but I will I will later on also guys do a um, comparison video for you guys showing the the difference in the two-thirds pump when you have a halfway decent uh, pump I'm sorry in the, a different the difference in flow and etc when you have a decent pump running is what I meant to say but so phew. all right and now I'm way off well off camera cool all right so anyhow hope you all had a happy happy Halloween Lucy how was your Halloween Lucy's gone. All right, Dan, did I miss miss saying anything about? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it was fun. What were your kids? What did they dress up as? Um, Jade was dressed up as a Native American Indian, oh. and uh, Luke was a cowboy. Oh, cowboy! They were kind of matching each other, and the dog had uh, was uh, had a, do um, a lion costume. Wait, so you had a cowboy, an Indian, and a lion? <laughs> I love it. Cool. All right. My girls are um, 11, and I just really, like, literally forgot it was Halloween to be legit. And they didn't say anything, and I just assumed that they were old enough, too old for, you know, for, for Halloween, for trick-or-treating. A uh, boy was I wrong. They jumped me the moment I got home, and... It was, let's go throw together something because there's candy out there to get. We've got to go get the candy, you know. So, anyhow, hi, Chimp the Reefer. Um, Dan, did I, uh, was there anything else that you would want to say about the airlifts? I'm sorry, I kind of uh, jumped through that, but I'm, I'm kind of disappointed I botched this one. We'll do better next time, but um, is there anything else that you'd want to say about it or... No, it's just a, a useful tool that can be deployed if you have extra air or if you don't have a pump. Um, you know, in certain circumstances, it can be useful. That's not to say that it's the way to go necessarily. Sure. As Ray pointed out, I mean, there's nothing wrong with using a power head at times. Um, but well, I wouldn't you know, use I, that on a fry tank, though. I'm sorry? I wouldn't use a power head on a fry tank. Right. Correct. But I, I also use air lifts in some of my other tanks as well. Um, even with some of the, like, with the, for example, the broodstock tanks, I'll, I'll have, some of them have airlifts where I want the flow increased without having to put a bigger pump in. Turn my light guys up. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I was going to say is that it, it, dang it, man. I am not having a good Halloween here, guys. Um, it, it very much was very useful to me in certain situations too. And I just, I really, I stick to my, my, um, I stick to my theory that it could it could help you know if you have a seahorse that's that's not eating and, and you're worried about adding some you know pump or whatnot if, if it's already stressed out it's you know cool it helped me bottom line 
and you guys wanted to know how to make it so that's how you make it I'm gonna suggest putting a hole in it because you know it didn't work so hot for me and I'd be worried about it falling out um, I did see Dan's clip was a great idea but you know hey KG tropics and anybody can join if you want we're probably not gonna go much longer um, and and when we do do some more demonstration videos I promise I'll make sure it's not a holiday and I'll have my camera set up, guys. I apologize. but um, One comment I'd like to make, though, yeah. before I go. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to use a teen tank or hospital tank, whatever, um, the sweep probably isn't going to work because the tank, most people use a 10-gallon tank and the sweep uh, wouldn't be too good uh, for, in a 10-gallon tank. Why? Well, I think the, with the curvature, it's going to be way out of the water. Nope, I, yeah, I, I actually, I have them in uh, my little tubs, um, which are less than 10 inches tall, and I actually put sweeps, I, I use three-quarter sweeps, though, uh, which are smaller, but I put sweeps in the little in the little bitty tubs as well. Yeah, mine are all one inch, maybe that's why. Yeah, the one inch is going to take, it's going to need more height, but if you drop down to three-quarter, it significantly reduces the height needed. Yeah. I was gonna say I used I used the one inch in literally a five gallon. Um, it was I was telling Dan when we talked uh, about even trying to show this that it was a very oddly shaped tank. Like I said, if you watch the ammonia poisoning video, you can see it's it's like one of those tanks that had the curve at the front. It was really weird shaped, and there was no way I was gonna be able to put a power head anywhere in there safely. Um, and uh, you know the airlift saved it. Well, the nice thing is with a glass tank is you can use suction cups and fasten it to the side. It's where in the tubs you really don't have a means of doing that. Right. Right. Um, just kind of looking at the um, comments, what are we talking about in Tice, you guys? Feel free to feel free to come in if you want, um, say hi or whatever. But what I see some what is in Tice? I don't even know what it is. Anybody know? Never, never come across it up here. Sounds like some. Uh, I see soaking they, food in it. Huh? They were talking about it last week. Oh, see, uh, see, it shows how much I miss while I'm trying to make airlifts. Um, but and it looks like KG Tropics, no baby goats yet. Literally any minute. I can't wait to see them. Um, be sure to post, post, post. And you guys are saying you're disappointed in Entice? I'm trying to follow. I guess I shouldn't bother. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. I have a bunch of stuff I could rant about, but I'm guessing that's not what people really want to hear. So, um, Dan, are the Pie Vaults still on special? What's going on with them? I've got... Yeah, I still have some there. The most of what I had put up last time, uh, what's going to be ordered is probably been ordered. And another week or two, I'll put up another batch of pictures. And uh, the, the the bloody thing has changed so much. I some of the ones I put up are pictures that were taken previously. So um, I have a hard time selling them or picking them out if, if people wait a while to order them. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, Based on the, well, uh, I might have to get a couple more just to let you know. But uh, I can't wait. I need to actually um, get this camera thing figured out so I can walk and talk with the camera because you won't believe how pretty my five balls have gotten. They are just gorgeous, and they need a boyfriend. But anyhow, um, I'm reading in the comments that Entice is apparently a supplement to get trick tricky eaters to eat. Um, and looks like people are not having luck with it. Um, Dan, uh, there's another question too, but Dan, what do you use to get tricky eaters to, to What do you use when, you know, to get seahorses to eat when they're not? Uh, depends upon the circumstance and why, but usually I add a drop of garlic. Okay. And uh, let them go hungry until they're ready to eat. Yeah. Um, usually that does it for me. I mean, if they're sick or something, then you need to treat the underlying cause. But, you know, it, it I usually don't have a big problem with that. 
Yeah. And that's uh, that's one of the, you know, I, I did the top ten things that have worked for me because I know what it's like to be freaking out. It's a lot different when, it's, you know, you buy two seahorses and that's all you have and they won't eat and it's really scary. Um, so I tried to share some tricks that have worked, but that is the underlying point is don't freak out. <laughs> don't, you know go crazy and think that they're going to die in a day because they're not. They're just not. But, um, and Eric Grafton said, so I have a glass tank three foot deep and my power heads keep falling off with my suction cups. Any ideas on rigging something to a magnet to get it to work? Um, do you mean, let's see, keep falling off with my suction cups. Any, idea? um, any, any of the power heads with suction cups, uh, I've, I've never had luck with them. I would probably honestly suggest just get a new power, get, get it. I use RW4s and they have the magnets and they have, <clears throat> you know, the feed button and all of that. But, uh, Ray, have you ever done anything with a power head that kept falling off suction cups? Well, I, I use, um, uh, Hagen power heads and, uh, they come with a bracket as well as the suction cups, and I, I've never used the suction cups. As far as I'm concerned, it's a wasted effort. So I just uh, use the bracket, and it hangs on the top of the tank, or it's uh, power heads that I want on the bottom, and I just let them lie on the bottom because gotcha. I don't use substrate. Right. That's that's another video we're going to have to do is a discussion on substrate. But anyhow. Um, Yes, and with the garlic thing, uh, as you and I are both also reef keeping people, garlic is hugely widely debated and, you know, uh, there's so many crazy opinions back and forth in the reef world about garlic. Um, yeah, but that's that's using it as an everyday supplement. Right. If you're using it as a part-time thing just to entice them to start eating, that's a different ballgame. Absolutely. That's, you just took the words out of my mouth. That's what I was just going to say. And, um, Dan, is, is, I, is it called Allison? Um, yeah, Al Allison is the ingredient in garlic. It's one of the or organosulfurs that uh, has the most antimicrobial activity to it. It's very good for treating bacteria and, and protozoans, but I don't know if it's a good product to use on the food to try to entice them to eat. I think that regular garlic is going to have more potency in that respect. Okay. All right. Makes sense. So there you have it, folks. Um, and now, actually, I do have one more question because I remember the first time you told me that I went out and tried to get some garlic and boy, that was fun. <laughs> do you have any advice on how to actually do that? Because when I tried to get I mean, there's no, like, how do you soak it? There's no. You don't have to soak it. Um, okay. If you get, you can take the juice out of minced garlic. You can take okay. garlic oil. You, you know, they sell products out there for fish tanks, you know, the garlic, uh, garlic guard, guard right. what have you. Mm -hmm. But you can take any garlic and just put a drop or two on the food, let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute, and then feed it. Garlic is readily permeates the cellular membrane. It soaks into the food, unlike most enrichments. But there are problems with uh, buying liquid uh, forms of it because the allicin is so unstable that uh, right. it doesn't but last that, long. Right, but in that case, you're trying to use it for a different purpose. If you're using it strictly as a food enhancement, attractant, no. or way to you know try to get them to eat, that the the amount of allicin doesn't matter. Uh, it's the scent in the food that attracts them. And, you know, if you're treating a sick seahorse, then you want something that has a high content of allicin, and that's a different ballgame entirely. Okay. I've never used it, so uh, I've only gone, I can only go by what I've read. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's worked for me. I, I, I didn't mention it in the video just because it's so debated, but, uh, you know, it's worked for me for sure um i'm trying to read and talk not doing a great job of it but eric i'm trying to follow you said that you your pumps that keep falling are ex 250s you have three of them you found them online they were inexpensive i believe well time to invest buddy no i'm just i'm, I'm teasing kind of but even the you know like i i'm kind of cheap too but 
you know, I love my, I, I, my RW4s and RW8s are still working, like, after all these years, and I have a Guy Reed that's just amazing for a bigger tank. I love those things. They're just awesome. So, yeah, with this video, guys, I, I'm definitely not against powerheads. They're, they're very helpful. Got to cover them with seahorses, but they're, you know, amazing. Uh, I'm just showing because you guys asked, so that's why we did this. Um, and I will still do a video showing the comparison, but, and, um, let me see. And, uh, if you can answer, I'm very curious how your seahorse is doing, uh, after you treated for ammonia poisoning. Um, Anne actually commented that she had to treat a seahorse and that the video that I made actually helped her and made my day. So, just curious how that seahorse is doing. And... We definitely want to see the baby goats, Kaz. Let me see. Eric, send your wife my way. I'll give her, I'll chat with her. No, I'm <laughs> please don't. <laughs> please don't. But, um, anyhow. I don't know. I can, I can, I can hear Dan, Dan's breaking up. He's, he's getting, he's getting, uh, He's getting bored. <laughs> Kelly's rambling. Um, so I think if if and if nobody has anything else, then I'm going to go ahead and say happy Halloween and end the stream. Um, hopefully, if it, I'm gonna rewatch this, if this one worked, then we know we can continue to use Hangouts um, successfully. And I am still playing with Discord. And I would like to start doing some more of these example videos. So you guys let me know in the comments if I had had things set up properly um, to begin with. Would you want to see more, you know, um, different little tricks that maybe we could show you? Just let me know what you guys think. And with that, I'm going to say good night. Dan, Ray, Lucy, anybody got anything else? I'm going to take that as a no. Okay. All right. Well, happy Halloween, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll get some camera footage going next time better. And have a great Wine Wednesday, and we will see you next week. Everybody, anybody want to say bye? Goodbye, everyone. See ya. All right. That was Lucy's bye was the slamming door. All right. Happy Wine Wednesday, everybody. Bye. Okay. Bye now.